views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Demartini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's so great to have all of you tuning us in and turning us on on this incredible day. Incredible day. Uh, Many of you have weighed in already with us on social media in terms of our Oscar picks. But I must say that whatever you decided, whatever you thought was going to win the best of this and the best of that, the message was very, very clear for, I think, many people in that uh, uh, event last night. And that was how amazing we are, how absolutely enough we are. And so much of the comments, the conversation, were driven towards that end. Whether you're thinking about what it is your life is about or how it should be, or what you're thinking about it could be, fast forwarding to a future, Are you seeing an amazing life? Are you seeing the potholes that you step in keeping you down? Or do you see yourself rising up? Do you see yourself in a place that you never thought you'd be able to be before? Beyond whatever that is you're struggling with today, busting through to a new reality, a reality of an exquisite life today. I'm so thrilled to have Janine Roth join us here today. For many of you, you probably know who she is. Besides amazing, besides having New York Times bestselling books, when somebody is passionate about their lives, about what they mean to do, and about being in service of others, something incredible happens. Something happens. Your life takes on a journey of its own. But the one thing you know is that you step forward with courage, conviction, also a place where truth shows up in ways you never thought before. So today, we're gonna take a look at what this is all about, this messy, magnificent life with this New York Times best-selling author and much more. And today, fasten your seat belts to learn how you too can have a magnificent life, albeit your hair may be a little messy. Janine, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I would say it's more than our hair that gets a little messy. I would yeah. say that, you know, uh, just being human, being alive in these fabulous but also vulnerable and ever-changing bodies and having relationships with people we love who <clears throat> come and go, get sick, uh, some of them die while we're still alive, we get sick, it's 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 um, it's the whole ball of wax being human, which is why mm-hmm. I called it this messy, magnificent life. One of the things I'm struck by in you, for, first of all your book, but also your message, is mindful. The word mindful comes to mind. But besides mindful, one of the things that I love and I want to talk about it is that when we hear the words body, mind, spirit, and we hear them right. Some people have heard them over and over and over again, body, mind, spirit, mind, body, soul. Sometimes we get two out of three really well. But the idea of getting all three going at the same time, like in harmony (laughs) and in the flow of things, that's what you write about, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I write about 
being in alignment with yourself so that what you, where you place your attention, let's put it like that, how mm-hmm. you spend your energy, because really that's what you've got to spend, your energy, what you think about, what you ponder about, what you obsess about, what you get stuck in, in terms of your thoughts, that we can be much more proactive about that rather than have the tail wag the dog so that at the end of the day, we get, we get to the end of the day, we throw ourselves into bed, and somehow we feel like, oh, it wasn't really a satisfying day, or we feel disgruntled, or we feel empty. So I write about the challenges that we face and how to really work with them in a way that allows the dog to wag the tail instead of the tail to wag the dog. Mm. You know, one of the things I was struck by out of the gate reading your book um, was the focus on uh, attention. And I, I gotta tell you, I love this. You, you and my mom could have been like best friends, totally could have (laughs) been like best friends. Um, Before it was fashionable to say things like what you put your attention on expand, things like that. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, this, this woman from the deep South had her first child at 12, second at 13. She knew about where to put her attention at a very young age. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you find in the day and age we live in that this is the next frontier for us to truly, truly figure out attention. Well, I, I think that um, we don't realize that attention is everything that um, what, you know, what you put your attention to grows. So if you, get caught in negative thoughts, and I was an expert in this. I used to say, you know, hand me lemonade and I'll give you back lemons because I was an expert at seeing what was wrong in any situation and then getting anxious about it, feeling a level of discontent about it, um, trying to figure out how to fix it, fix it, fix it. I didn't quite get First of all, that there was a way to change that, change my thinking in, without having to change every single situation that there was, you know, I think it was Wayne Dyer, I'm not actually sure if it mm-hmm. was him or not, who said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Oh. And I didn't really feel that or believe that. And I found that a lot of my students, I've now been working with people. I started my first workshop over 35 years ago and have been teaching retreats for 20 years and so have now been working with quite a few people ongoingly now for years in a row. And a lot of what we work on, because a lot of what the issue with food is about, is how you see things, where you place your attention, what you focus on, and what you don't. And um, the a power that we've got to take our attention away from this endlessly obsessive, anxiety-driven discontent to, to another, um, I don't even want to say subject, another focus. Mm-hmm. So that if I, I talk about when my husband and I lost our money in 2008. We mm-hmm. lost every penny of our life savings in the Madoff yep. debacle. And yep. I w- realized, I didn't realize until we lost our money that up until then, I was still anxious about, uh oh, what was going to happen. I was always looking for the ways we didn't have enough not the ways we did have enough. You know, I, I've had students say to me, this is just on the fat, thin level, I would die to be as, as thin as I was five years ago when I would have died to have been thinner. And mm. that, that is the same thing. It's a function of this feeling, this ongoing feeling we carry into every single situation 
of not enough. We don't have enough. We don't know how, and I'm not thin enough. Uh, you know, if only I could lose five more pounds, ten more pounds, twenty more pounds, then somehow I could relax. I have a lot of people who say to me, because I believe and teach in a combination of intuitive eating, as it's now called, which is basically trusting your body signals within a particular structure or within limitations, because a lot of times when people hear me say that, they think I'm giving them permission to binge, and they confuse right. self-acceptance with self-indulgence. Those things are not the same thing. They're not the same thing. But I have a lot of people saying to me, well, you know, yeah, I can do what you're talking about, but let me first go on a diet, lose weight, and then I'll get to it. As if we have all the time in the world to come home to ourselves, to actually mm. turn around and face ourselves, to see what is actually going on. Let's just take this challenge with food. What's going on here? When somebody, I did a, a book event the other night, and one person said, I eat to make myself feel comfortable because I'm so uncomfortable before I eat, but then I eat, and I'm really uncomfortable after I eat. Mm. And and just taking that sentence apart, I eat for comfort, but then I'm uncomfortable. And so eating actually didn't make her feel comforted. It only made her feel more uncomfortable. Often we don't even eat it when she wasn't hungry. Um, we don't even hear ourselves say those things, and we don't understand that we've got other choices. Yeah, I love that you are bringing this to the forefront. I mean, there is a realization as I'm reading your book, and I'm thinking to myself, something powerful happens when we lose it all. And, you know, I say that, and, and I, I'm probably going to get a bunch of emails, but many of the folks listening know that for somebody like me, it took me, I don't know, up until about five years ago or maybe a little bit longer ago, I've been doing this show 15 years, when I finally said my mom committed suicide when I was six, I was homeless at 17 and arrested at, at 18. And I think to myself, why did I wait so long to share that? What's the burden of shame that carries forward in a family? Why was it that my sister hovered and and harbored, you know, guilt and shame for all of her life. And finally, it ended on a hospital floor at 450 pounds. When we come back, we're going to talk about this, this messy life that could reveal so much to us, but through the lens of somebody that knows what it's like to lose it and then choose it back. That's my guest today. When we come back, we're going to talk about this. Janine Roth's amazing work is about looking at how we not only recover, but we discover the truth of who we are. We'll be right back. how to achieve wellness in all areas of your life? Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Signs of wellness are a capacity to love and ability to nurture, a sense of purpose, a good sense of humor and plenty of fun in your life, a concern for others and a respect for the environment, a conscious commitment to personal excellence, a sense of balance and integrated lifestyle, and capacity to cope with whatever life presents. Well, people enjoy their lives and want them to last as long as possible. That's why the wellness mindset usually accompanies other constructive healthy lifestyle habits by adopting a wellness mindset and behaviors like eating well taking the right nutrition for the body exercising and saying affirmations are just a few things to structure a healthy system of values and beliefs call us at 888-777-4232 that's 888-777-4232 and visit us at maryjanemack.com 
Stuck in a roundabout of dysfunction? Stop circling around difficult issues and find out what's been holding you back. Learn how to speak your truth to power with host Dr. Kathy O'Bear. Create real change with smart tools and smart strategies. No frills, no fluff, just life-changing conversations to help get you where you want to be. Extend your reach and become an agent for real change with Kathy O'Bear. For more information on Kathy and her work, please visit drkathyobear.com. That's drkathyobear.com. Tune in to People Like Us Radio with Megan Lyons, transcending the trauma of the human experience. Megan will be raising the universal consciousness by empowering listeners with their own inner strength, working past trauma and abuse. Megan will show you how to find true healing and inner peace through the art and practice of self-love. Tune in every first and third Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. For more information about Megan and her work, visit EnterTheLightLLC.com. Are you willing to challenge everything you've been taught about life and death? Join Angie Corbett Kuyper on her hit show, Beyond Grief Radio. Redefining loss and grief as Angie shares through choice, present moment awareness, and keeping an open mind that creating anything is possible, even in death. Tune in every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information or to listen to past shows, visit AngieCorbettKuyper.com. If you have a sense that you are meant for more, join Heather Allison every third Tuesday at noon Pacific as she explores an ancient, forgotten energy within us and helps us access our original archetypal blueprint. The Golden Path will help you remember the key to unlocking your life, love, success, and magic you were meant for. A key to unlocking your golden path. Visit heather-allison.com. Hey, everybody, welcome back. The Look, this messy, magnificent light. This is about a field guide to mind, body, and soul. Incredible Janine Roth. And there's something important about this. But before we get back to this, look, can you tell folks, A, how do we get a copy of the book? B, how do they join your community, which I just did? And all of the above. What is the best way for people to find out more about you, Janine? Yeah, Um so my website is a fabulous way, which yeah. is JanineRoth.com, and you spell that with a G, not a J, G-E-N-E-E-N-R-O-T-H, JanineRoth.com. That's the best way to get in touch with me. Also, I'm on Facebook and Instagram, <clears throat> Twitter. But the other thing I want to let people know is that every couple of years I do a workshop in San Francisco and we're live streaming this workshop. It's this coming weekend. And so if people want to join us via live stream, they can do that as well. Wow. And, and how do we do that? Through your website? Yes. We're, you know, I'm actually just during the break, I walked over to my website <laughs> and I actually did not see, uh, I did not see, uh, well, the, the workshop is definitely there under featured content, but yeah. I don't see live stream. So here's okay. how they can do it. They can do it if they want to register live stream. They can do it by calling my office manager. I'm giving everybody her phone number right now, 703-401-0871. They can register live stream. The workshop is Friday night and Saturday and I only do this every probably three or four years. So um, I hope everybody comes and live streams it. I love it. Thank you for doing that. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for doing that. Very important message. I'm so glad you're here today. Um, look, I want to ask you a question. You shared a little bit about your journey this has been sort of mind boggling for me since doing this show 15 years, right? I've often asked myself the question, would I actually be here today doing what I do if I didn't have some kind of devastation happen to me, like I hit a bottom? I want to ask you this question. 
do you think that in order for people to truly move on the path of change, that we have to hit our own personal bottoms? I think, here's what I think. Mm -hmm. I think, for me, disaster, (laughs) because I've had quite a few disasters. I was in a car accident. Uh, I ended up in a wheelchair for a couple of months. Uh, I was suicidal after losing and gaining a 1,000 pounds. Um, So, um, uh, and then we lost all of our money, and that really set me on another course of looking for what I had instead of what I didn't have. So do I think we need disaster? No. I think the, uh, the blessing in disguise of disaster, of any kind of loss or limit situation where there's no way of controlling it, where there's nothing you can do about it, you've hit a wall. That's the wall. You know, Mm. Bernie Madoff is in handcuffs, 30 years of life savings is gone, car accident, end up in a wheelchair, that's the way it goes, suddenly face or a loss, you know, somebody you love dies or you get a diagnosis, you're suddenly hit with that and you either, you know, have to figure out how to get through that in a way that you don't go down with it when we lost our money, for instance. And I write about this in This Messy, Magnificent Life. When we lost our money, I thought I was going to lose my mind. You know, I was already in my 50s. I had been working self-employed for 30 years, my husband too, and that was it. That was all the money we had, and it was gone. And that was 30 years of life savings. And, And my husband was away. He was away for the three weeks, the next three weeks. I had to... If I was going to sleep through the night and not and not rip my hair out and not just dissolve in terror, extinguish myself in terror, there. So that's what I'm talking about: the limit situation. There was nothing to do about it, absolutely nothing to do about it, and I had to figure out from the support of a lot of friends who were able to say to me when I called them and tell them two in particular that we had just lost our money. They were brilliant, and but each of them in their own way said nothing of any value has been lost. And that aggravated me terribly yeah, yeah. when they said that because I felt like this was not the time to be spiritual. But what I realized was I had to find something else, a different way of looking, something that I needed to pay attention to that was not about how much we had or what if, you know, one of us got sick and we had to go to Germany and get a special treatment and we wouldn't have money and how we were going to pay for our rent that month. What we, I mean, I didn't know that we'd be able to stay in our house another month. And the, what I had to quickly learn to do, it took a couple of weeks, but what I had quickly learned to do is to start looking for what I could find instead of what I had lost what I had enough of instead of what I didn't have enough of. And that was rigorous. That was a rigorous kind of training that I had to do because the suffering, so this answers your question, that I felt if I didn't do that was immense. The suffering was immense. And so every time I started wandering off into terror, Every time I started wandering off into, oh, what are we going to do? What happens if I had to bring myself back because it was so terribly, terribly uncomfortable to go there that I had to learn a whole different way to pay attention. And so suffering helps because it squeezes us. It, you know, it, puts, it lights fires under our butt. It's sort of like sink or swim. And if we're going to swim, then we've got to learn a different way. Yeah. I I ask you that question because I never really thought about this uh, until, and let's get to the book here too. 
uh, I didn't think about it because I always saw myself as a fighter, can rise up, right? I'm a girl from the Bronx, New York, you know what I'm saying? Grew up in the projects. So, you know, there's a way about me, and I had a fabulous stepmom, which I mentioned to you during the break, who taught me the power of perseverance. But in my life, I've always had my body. When my body failed me in 2004, I was faced with something different. I had to uh -huh. look differently at my life. And let's talk about that. You know, the old tricks, the old things, the old obsessions just were not going to work for me anymore. I want to ask you this question as I think about what you've written about in the book. And I think about the level of obesity in our country. And I do think about it. My sister, I love my sister, and I, I felt I could do nothing, but I didn't understand it. What is, if I could ask you this question, what is the secret that we need to explore about our bodies and about treating it well? I think the very, very first place that most of us need to go, not all of us, but most of us need to go. There are a couple of different steps here. But the first place is that when we try to change out of self-loathing and hatred and shame, we only go backwards. Oh. It never works. It, and it's very hard for people to believe this because they feel... Um, because if they hate themselves and they also believe, or if they don't like themselves, they also believe if they were thinner, if their mm -hmm. bodies looked different, they wouldn't hate themselves. But that's absolutely not true. It's just not true. I've, I've, I've heard from tens of thousands of people that this is not true. You just find something else not to like. You find mm -hmm. something else to hate yourself about. It might not be your body. Now it's about your relationship. Now it's about something else. It's, so there's something, the first step for most people, I say this that is for most people because it's not for everybody, and I'll talk about the other thing that is that if kindness doesn't work, then mm -hmm. what does, um, is to realize that you just have to take stock with where you are right now. There's no rush. There's absolutely no rush. I can hear people say, I know, but my doctor says that I have to lose 40 pounds immediately. Yeah. And my knees hurt, and my joints hurt, and my diabetes is out of control. I'm not, I'm not encouraging anybody to overeat in these cases, in, or in any case, for instance. I don't encourage overeating at all, but I do encourage acceptance. I do encourage kindness. I do encourage the act of turning towards yourself and having some compassion for yourself and saying, oh, sweetheart, oh, so sorry, you know, you're in this situation like a, like a, 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 a cherished caretaker or parent would say to you, I'm so sorry that you're in pain. Let's just take a moment here and take stock here and feel what it's like just to be you and see what it is you really, really, really want to do about it. What do you want to do about this? Some people decide, believe it or not, they just, it's not worth it to change. It's like sugar is the best thing around. I want to keep eating. And other people, and that, that's not usually what happens, that's a, that's a decision by default. In a way, the, yeah. when you start being kind to yourself, you realize how mean you've been. You realize mm -hmm. that what I call the GPS from the twilight zone yeah. or the crazy <laughs> ant in the attic, um, the sensor, some people call it, has been running your life. You realize mm -hmm. that. And you think, wow, I am believing and merged with this mean, vicious, violent voice that is telling me I'm a 
sniveling rat, basically. And that is not going to help me change. That's mm. not, it's very, very hard to make good choices when you are under the thumb of yeah. a mean, vicious voice. So kindness, disengaging, and I talk about how to disengage from that voice in this book. Kindness, disengaging from the, the, the shame and the, the, the censor, and then taking some kind of positive action on your own behalf. You've got to actually act differently, and it, it might be one or two small things that last three minutes a day each day, but to actually start acting on your own behalf. Insight does not change make. You mm-hmm. cannot change because you've had an aha moment. It doesn't work that way. What works is that you change because you change the way you do something. So it could be as simple as in the morning when you wake up, when you open your eyes, as soon as you open your eyes. I do believe in first morning thoughts and in guiding those, becoming aware of them. Then instead of, oh, what's wrong and everything I have to do today and I didn't get enough sleep and all the other things you don't have enough of, and what a rush you're already in, even though it's only been three minutes since you've opened your eyes, you, you, you ask yourself, what's not wrong right now? And so you lift the trance of negativity, you break it, and you put it on something, like similarly to what I did after we lost our money, but a little bit different, because this is about every moment. Chances are you're safe. You have a roof over your head. Chances are... You're warm. You chances are you have enough to eat. I mean, that's incredibly good fortune to have all of that. But we take that for granted. We zoom past the gorgeous things in our lives. Oh yeah, the sunset. Oh yeah, pretty. Okay, but what do I have to do? Got to cross mm-hmm. off that another to do list. Oh yeah, just had a beautiful interaction with my child. Oh yeah, that's good. But you know, let's get on to making the meal and sitting down and you know, standing at the refrigerator and eating. You know, we zoom past the moment that could satisfy and nourish us, that actually feed us as much as, if not more than food does. We zoom past them, and then we zoom past eating. Because while we're eating, we're reading, we're watching TV, we're on our Facebook page, we're answering our email, we're not actually doing what we're doing, and we're missing this experience, too. Because unless you're present, really present, you're never going to be satisfied with anything. Mm -hmm. Wow. So very powerful. And part of what you were talking about, you so beautifully outlined, not just in the book, but I love that you're bringing this message out to the public. I love that we're talking about changing action, changing thoughts, changing action. When we come back, Janine, what are we going to talk about is something you wrote in the book. I'd really like to explore this with you. Each time we turn toward, rather than away from ourselves, the part of ourselves that is not our story arises. When we come back, we're going to talk about the story. What are the stories we tell ourselves? How often are we confused about the paradoxes in our lives that may reveal to us that absolute beauty of stillness that uncovers the truth of our heart and our soul. And the message and the way Janine has written this in this book is not just a guide. It really is an invitation, an invitation to thrive in the messy, magnificent life. We'll be right back. Tune in to the Astral Insider, your portal for adventure, insight, and growth with Fernando Albert. And get ready to tour the astral realm, expand your life in ways you've never imagined, and call in for the journey of your life with this world-renowned lucid dreamer, astral projectionist, psychic medium, and healer, Fernando Albert. 
This is every second and fourth Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. What is a brilliant culture and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Hi. I'm Jane Matanga with Grow Your Soul Radio. It's been said that whatever you believe, you are. When you take charge with your positive thoughts and beliefs, you are the creator of your perceptions. You have the power to shift your reality. When you begin to shift your beliefs, the universe will dream a bigger dream for you than you ever imagined. Believe in your dreams and every part of your world can open up in new and glorious ways because everything is possible. I'd love for you to join me on Grow Your Soul Radio with my co-host, Dr. Pat, on Transformation Talk Radio. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit jenroyster.com for more information. Are you feeling stuck in unhealthy habits, toxic relationships, or low self-esteem? Do you crave a healthy relationship filled with inspiration? You might just be on the verge, on the verge of attracting your soulmate. Tune in each month to The Laura Richer Show, where dating coach Laura Richer and co-host matchmaker Peggy Bennett share tools for using your dating breakdown for a relationship breakthrough. For more information, visit richerhealinghypnosis.com. Hey, everybody. Yep. Oh, boy. I'm loving this. Uh, First of all, let me just say I want to really thank Janine Roth for joining me here today. Uh, Most importantly, we're going to let you know, one, how to get a copy of the book. Two, how to engage. I love engagement. I love being able to engage. And that's part of, you know, getting to the place of taking action, right? You know, I think if we were all meant to do stuff by ourselves, we'd each been given our own planet. But we we don't <laughs> we don't have our own planet, Ginny. All right, how do we get a copy of the book? How do we find out more about you? And how do we do this live streaming? How do we participate in that? Yeah. So the books are anywhere where books are. Bookstores, yeah. <laughs> your independent bookstore, a chain bookstore, Amazon, Kindle. They're everywhere where books are, um, and. Uh, you can engage with me on Facebook, Instagram, uh, and what I think is really exciting right now is that I'm doing this live stream for the first time in a couple of years, a workshop, this coming Friday night, the 1st and the 2nd of March. People can, and from all over the world, are live streaming it. And I would love for your listeners to be live streaming. And how you find yeah. out about that is two ways. Call my office manager, 703-401-0871, and she'll register you immediately. And or look on our website. It will be under featured content on the home page. Her telephone number will also be in the events part of the website and so there are different ways you can register i love it 
Thank you. And we'll make sure everybody, we'll make sure we post this on social media, kind of remind you after we replay the show and move forward on this, because this is really the year for change. Uh, look, Janine, I have said this about this year uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, it started with me back in uh, November. And then, of course, my astrology friends are like, okay, Pat, of course, you're like a quadruple Sagittarius, and Jupiter now is back in Sag. And I thought, okay, that's got to mean something. But I don't think that's what I was feeling. Um, I was struck by this quote that I pull right out of your book. And I think this is part, this is part of the energy of this. This is, this is, for me, how we get invited to take this journey and include spirit include spirit. So it says this, each time we turn toward rather than away from ourselves, the part of ourselves that is not our story arises. And I wanted to talk with you about this, because you go on to talk about unlove, you know, you go on to talk about sadness, you know, you go on to talk about in that moment, right. And this was such a powerful thing for me to read, I had to read it four times, and I'm still not sure I understand it. That's why I'm talking to you about it. <laughs> okay. Help, so help read me it, here. Help me. Read it very slowly again, and let's just go through it together. Each time we turn toward rather than away from ourselves, the part of ourselves that is not our story arises. Ah, uh, yeah. So what that is referring to, let's say I feel lonely and I am, I feel it, but usually what most of us do when we feel something is we want to get rid of it. We try to fix it. We try to change it. We try to make it go away. Of course, that's sort of the natural thing that we do. We feel something, we want it to go away. We don't like feeling it. But in that case, what usually happened is that we are utterly merged with it. What, because it's not just, let's say, the loneliness we feel or the sadness we feel. What it is that's also going on is the story we're telling ourselves about the loneliness. So I could, I could feel loneliness or let's just say sadness. Um, it's just a feeling. It has a sensory a sensory part to it. I feel lonely, and how do I know I feel lonely? Well, there's a heaviness in my chest, if, uh, and, and it feels sort of like my legs feel heavy, too. And um, I feel hollowed out in my, there's a heaviness, and at the same time, my, the, the, the part that is, is hollow, there's a hollowness in my chest mm -hmm. as well. So there's, let's just call it a hollowed heaviness in my chest. Now, if I don't tell a story about it, that's one thing. But usually what happens is before we even let ourselves feel the feeling, we're into, oh, my God, I'm going to spend the entire rest of my life alone. I'm going to die alone on the street, homeless, eating out of cat, tin food, at cat food tin. Mm -hmm. Um Nobody's going to love me. Um, in fact, the friends that I already think love me don't love me. We start embroidering stories. The mind interprets a feeling immediately and turns it into a story. If you turn toward the feeling, whatever that feeling, which is basically just saying recognize that you feel it. And believe it or not, most people don't recognize it because they try to get rid of it the second they feel it. And I'm saying turn towards it and, oh, I feel lonely. And the part that notices you're feeling lonely, this is sort of a two-part answer here, mm -hmm. because this thing I'm just about to say answers your question, but then I'm yeah. going to talk about what to do once you realize you feel it. The part that notices it's lonely isn't lonely. The part that notices you're feeling loneliness has to be bigger than the loneliness. In order, let's just say furniture in a room, mm -hmm. in order 
for there for you to even notice that there's furniture in the room, there has to be space around the furniture. I'm looking at a rocking chair that I have in yeah. my living room right now. And the reason the rocking chair stands out is because there's a lot of space around it. If this entire room was just one big rocking chair, you know, all I'd see was fabric. That's, you know, that's all I'd see. But because there's space, because there's something that's not the rocking chair, I can notice the rocking chair. And what's very comforting about noticing a feeling, this is where awareness and all the talk about mindfulness comes in. This is the whole essence of meditation, that when you're meditating and you're noticing a thought, something bigger than the thought notices the thought. Otherwise, you're just engaged in the thought. You're just thinking, 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 thinking. But when you notice your thinking, there's thinking, there's what you notice, and then there's that which notices. That's the mindfulness part. That's what the big deal is. That's what everybody's talking about when they say mindfulness. It's basically awareness of what's happening inside your mind. And the awareness part or the mindfulness part is what's bigger than the thought. And that's very comforting because that mindfulness part or awareness part or present, some people call it, or true nature, that's the part of you that's always with you, that never leaves you. Like when I say to my mother, my mother's 90, and she will say to me, I don't feel like 90. I feel, you know, the way I've always felt, my body that feels like 90. I feel changeless. The part that feels changeless is the part that notices that thought because that's awareness itself. That's presence. That's mindfulness. That's spaciousness. That's relaxation. That's relief. That's really good news, really good news to be aware that you are bigger than your thoughts because, you know, our thoughts can drive us insane. And yeah. our thoughts, as anybody who has tried to meditate for two minutes finds out, that our thoughts ricochet from the past to the present, from anxiety to anticipation. I mean, we're hardly ever, I mean, to the future, not the present. We're hardly mm-hmm. ever in this present moment where if you really ask yourself, What problem do you have right now? Right now, if you don't go into your mind and, and, you know, dredge up something from the past or anticipate what the future would be, in this moment, you would not have any problems at all. Mm -hmm. You might notice, oh, I have an ache in my foot. My knee hurts. My back hurts. Um, uh you might notice some challenges, but an ache is an ache. It's not a problem till your mind makes it into a problem. I'm just coming out of the flu. It, I had to really practice for a week when I felt so awful to realize I just had the flu. It wasn't a problem that I had the flu. I wasn't dying. You know, my mind can immediately go into, <laughs> oh, what if this is the beginning of pneumonia? And what if I have this? And what if I don't get better? And I have a friend who had this for three weeks. And, oh, my God, I have this workshop to teach. You know, all of that, just in this moment, the flu is the flu. It's not a problem. You know, I, I boy, I, this is really leading me to this next question. Um You know, I've had moments throughout my life where, and I've shared this with our listeners, and thank you so much for explaining that. The thing that I look back on in my life when I had an opportunity to do it are what I call the angels that have shown up for me. And some of them, yeah, some of them may be invisible, but others, they were the two-legged kind. And yet most of my life, I didn't realize they were angels. And Mm -hmm. there's a part in your book where you are, and I can't remember the exact thing you say, but it's almost like there is a discovering that there's a spiritual moment that shows up where everything makes sense. And yet we don't think about it that way. And in this, this, this idea of having a place of stillness and peace 
uh, and equating that to almost the missing link in almost everything you read, where we're so connected to what we call spirit or soul that we don't think about it. Um, let me ask you this question. I probably paraphrased it in a way that is not exactly the way you have it in the book. But that moment for me and how I remember it is the key for me these days for my life and for understanding what my next step is. How do we get there? How do we get there? It, it's not hard. And I think that it's very important to debunk the myth that this takes 40 years of meditation yeah. practice and 40 years of therapy and spiritual involvement and psychological sophistication. It, it's in every moment you can, or any moment, you can ask yourself right now if this very life, this very moment, if this moment was an answer to my prayer, <clears throat> now maybe you don't pray, mm -hmm. so, but an answer to my heart's desire, as Dorothy mm -hmm. in The Wizard of Oz says, um, <laughs> <clears throat> if this moment was an answer to my heart's desire, an answer to my prayers, how, how would my orientation to it shift? How would I see this moment differently if I believed that it was an answer to my prayer? And that is an automatic shift. That shifts you into a different way of looking at, wow, um, well, I would see, first of all, that I'm alive, that I'm breathing, that I have what I need, that maybe I'm not comfortable in this area or this area or that area, but being on the edge of that is helping me to see what the next step is to take. Mm -hmm. If this moment was an answer, if this life that I'm living right now really was an answer to my prayers, how does it fit me exactly? If, if assuming I designed it, to be just like this, how would my relationship, if you want to call it that, although that's not the right terminology, how would how I look at my life change? You would be appreciative of it. You would be incredibly, you know, awed by what it is right now. And that's what we're talking about, the ability to shift the way you place your attention or mm -hmm. how you place your attention or what you put attention to, that is what shifts you. That is what shifts you. You know, I, I, for many people listening to the show today, there's much more here than we can fit in this time, this hour. And I want to thank you for that. Um, Janine, I want to thank you for bringing a very, very powerful message for our time to the forefront. You know, one that really does use the word magnificent in it. And, you know, the message as well as the teachings for the time we live in. Uh, my mother used to say, don't listen to the folks that say you can't have it all. And I never mm. understood what she meant. Mm -hmm. um, but she was talking about how you get there. I found out later, by the way. Um, and she, too, died at a very young age. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to ask you this question. As we move forward in our lives, thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for taking this message out. One more time, how can we get a copy of the book? How can we find out about this live streaming event? And what's your personal message? What would you like to leave us with today? Thank you. Oh, thank you for asking me these questions so often. I really appreciate that. Um, people can buy a copy of the book, get a copy of the book, wherever they get copies of books. Libraries, independent bookstores, chain bookstores, Amazon, online, anywhere. You can find the book there, This Messy, Magnificent Life. <clears throat> they can be in touch with me 
via my website, Facebook, Instagram, and join us this week, this Friday night, March 1st, Saturday, March 2nd, for a once every couple of years event. I'm not quite sure when or if I'm going to do this again. Live streaming a workshop. It's in San Francisco. Of course, people are welcome to join us in person. We love that. Mm -hmm. But live streaming and the way they can find out about that, it will be on my website under featured content and or they can call my office manager, Judy Ross, 703-401-0871. 703-401-0871. The live streaming is great. Awesome. And what do you want to leave us with? What would you say your personal message is for us today? That everything you think is possible is to be very mindful of where you put your attention and to do one thing every day that is uh, indicative of where you want to be, like what's not wrong right now when you wake up in the morning mm. and before you go to sleep at night, but to actually do it, put it into practice. Don't wait. I'm on it. I'm on it. Put it into practice, everyone. Stay tuned. We got more coming up on Transformation Talk Radio. The preceding audio was via a Skype call.